the Central District Health, Crush the Curve, Idaho, and numerous partner organizations and individuals. It's proud to share with you a program that will assist Meridian businesses as they reopen for business. Our campaign is designed to educate businesses on the basic guidelines to reopen based on the Central District Health and CDC guidelines. It will allow businesses to demonstrate to the public that they're doing so in a manner that will keep Meridian healthy and open for business. Online and speaking with us today are just a few of the partners and organizations that have developed this program and support the Meridian business community, as well as local businesses leading in best practices when it comes to safely reopening. Today we have uh, Dinko Milkovich, uh, Program Manager with Central District Health. We have Amy Stahl uh, with Saltzer Health and Crush the Curve Idaho. And we have Tiffany Quillacy with Wahoo's Rowing Springs and Galaxy Event Center. And we will get to their presentations and we'll open it up for questions at the end of the program. Uh, you can enter your questions at any time during the program in the question window. The premise behind our campaign was getting businesses back open and restarting our economy. And that's why our group was actually started. We initially pursued efforts to get everyone open as soon as possible. We also saw the bigger issue businesses might face when reopening amidst the COVID-19 crisis. And that was, will the public return to the stores or establishments when they reopen? We were contacted and still are daily from our business members on how the governor's plan applies to their business. When can I actually open? And what guidelines does my business need to follow? While the Meridian Chamber of Commerce is not an authority on the plan or the recommended guidelines, we're here to help Meridian businesses understand them better. The last thing we want to happen is for our local businesses is that they go to the effort and expense of opening, bring back their employees, restock their shelves, and the public, the consumers, not visit their establishment out of fear or concern for their safety. The Central District Health and CDC have developed some basic guidelines to reduce your risk when out in public. And if businesses can follow these guidelines as they reopen, they'll demonstrate to the public that they're serious about the public safety and health, and that they will bring the consumer confidence necessary to restart our economy. The Meridian Chamber of Commerce has launched the Keep Meridian Healthy and Open for Business to help our businesses build that consumer confidence. As the, governor, or as the business is open to the governor's four-stage Idaho Rebounds program, we will assist Meridian businesses by conducting these industry-specific webinars that will provide information from the Central District Health and CDC on basic guidelines for that industry. The webinars... Um, The webinar is for an industry, and once they complete in, the, uh, in their specific industry, they'll be provided free of charge collateral materials so that they can display in their store that recognizes them as participating in the Keep Meridian Healthy and Open for Business campaign. These materials include uh, door signage, showing that they're part of the campaign, posters for their store, uh, if they need them to display, showing that this the steps and measures that they're taking to uh, protect their employees and their patrons. They'll also receive social media materials so that they can uh, include in their social media as being part of the campaign. They'll also receive, in, uh, they'll be included in our website and our, our marketing campaign as we roll out the consumer confidence portion of the, of the program. Our program goes beyond what some communities are doing by just creating business listings that are complying. We're helping our businesses understand what it means for their business and sharing best practices from other business leaders. The guidelines out there are not a one size fits all model. Uh, we don't know what we don't know. These industry specific webinars seek to educate beyond a sheet of written guidelines. To be in compliance with the governor's four stage plan, businesses will only be provided the collateral materials when their business is scheduled to open according to the plan. These are our final uh, webinars this week, but you can see all of the webinars that we've done on the sp other specific industries at the keepmeridianhealthy.org website. As a follow-up to our webinars, we're asking the participating businesses uh, to answer surveys from the Meridian Chamber of Commerce on how their opening is going and the sentiment their patrons uh, are showing as they're returning to the stores and the businesses. 
This will assist us in phase two of our program as we build out business revitalization teams to support Meridian businesses. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Dinko uh, Milkovich with Central District Health to share with us the guidelines for sporting venues and event centers as they get ready to open uh, in stage four. Dinko? Thank you, Sean. And thank you for having us, Central District, District Health as a participant at these webinars. So for the governor's four stage plan, um, the, the sporting venues and event centers and similar businesses, uh, they are, you know, it's an anticipated that if everything works out according to the plans that they can begin as early as June 13th, beginning of stage four. Um, at this time, Central District Health has not issued any formal guidelines specifically for these types of businesses. And the Idaho Rebounds website from the governor's office also has not issued a specific guidance document for these types of businesses, but uh, it may be on the way. So at this time, uh, such businesses are advised to start developing their plan or at least start thinking about developing their plan to reopen. And as with all other businesses, it should include uh, protocols for ensuring social distancing, uh, proper cleaning and disinfection, uh, pretty much the, uh, the guidelines that apply to general businesses. So that, that's really the... the um, as much help as we can offer at this time, but certainly uh, businesses are, they, they, they don't have to uh, submit their reopening plan to Central District Health, or if it's in another part of Idaho, their, the other health districts, they don't have to submit plans to Central District Health for evaluation or approval, but they are certainly welcome to contact us uh, or to submit a plan just for us to provide some input or some recommendations. So that's definitely an option, but uh, it is not required. Uh, but I'll be more than happy during this webinar to provide more information if I can or to answer any questions, definitely. Tinko, one question I'd like to ask right now is, do you, do you know when the, uh, those guidelines are anticipated to be put out? Uh, I know businesses are, are looking for those guidelines so that they can also start you know, making preparations prior to the opening dates. Uh, regarding that, I really know as much as you do. So um, my understanding is it's uh, on the way and other types of guidelines will be developed and issued kind of as the stages progress, but a specific date or time, time um, I really don't have that for you guys, I'm sorry. Uh, if, if you can stay on the line, we may have some of our attendees and, and others uh, with some questions later, but thank you. Yes, um, thank you. While it's not required at this time uh, employees uh, for employees to return to work, one of the most important factors that's been outlined all along is the importance of testing and tracing to, to slow the spread of the virus. Joining us uh, today uh, with Saltzer Health and Crush the Curve Idaho, is Amy Stahl. Amy, would you mind sharing with us about some of the availability of testing in the Treasure Valley? I'd be happy to, Sean. And once again, I'd like to commend you and the Meridian Chamber for the work you're doing to help your businesses understand these guidelines more clearly and get back to work. I am speaking on behalf of Salter Health, which is the medical partner to Crush the Curve Idaho. We do the testing in the Treasure Valley for Crush the Curve Idaho. If you're unfamiliar with Crush the Curve Idaho is, it is a group of business leaders led by Tommy Alquist, CEO of Ball Ventures Alquist and Salter Health, uh, to mobilize uh, quickly and uh, procure testing kits. As you may recall, early in this crisis, there was a shortage of testing kits. These business leaders mobilized uh, in partnership with government entities and have secured thousands of testing kits that are enabling us to do the two kinds of testing going on right now. The first is the PCR test, which is uh, a, a 
commonly seen, we've all seen pictures of it or maybe had it done ourselves, to test um, on, the, on uh, a person's COVID-19 diagnosis. It is a nasal swab. Um, we are testing currently for both symptomatic and asymptomatic people and sharing results on our website, which is a secure patient portal system, so the results are shared directly with the patients. Uh, we're conducting, conducting those PCR tests in three locations, two are Salter Health Urgent Care Clinics uh, with drive-up testing capability curbside. The third is at the 10 Mile Temporary Site at 10 Mile and I-84 and 10 Mile Crossing. Uh, we're also conduct conducting the IgG antibody testing at 10 Mile. That is uh, a simple blood test. Uh, we do those tests in conjunction with the University of Washington Virology Department. The test results uh, are also shared on a secure patient portal. So you can rest assured that that information um, is confidential, available to you as a patient. Uh, we are also doing partnerships with companies that are interested in uh, having more than one employee tested. That can be arranged through the Crush the Kite crushthecurveidaho.com website. You fill out a sim simple assessment um, and Salter Health employees will help you coordinate the testing and identify uh, which tests or both you would like for your employees. You should be aware, however, there might be a cost associated with that. The current cost is uh, about $95 for the PCR nasal swab test about $105 for the blood test. We do work with you to bill insurance, but if there are any um, unreimbursed costs, they would be borne by your company. So just want you to be aware of that. Once again, information is available at crushthecurveidaho.com uh, and saltzerhealth.com, and I will stay on the call for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate that. Um, Meridian is home to some of the most creative and successful businesses in Idaho. Webinars help bring everyone together to share what they're doing to respect industries, to reopen in a safe and healthy manner. These businesses are representing some of the best practices and are sharing with you ways to keep Meridian healthy and open for business. If you'd please welcome Tiffany Quillacy, uh, Chief Marketing Officer for Wahoo's Roaring Springs and Galaxy Events. Tiffany, would you mind sharing with us some things that you're doing uh, at your facilities uh, to, uh, to reopen. Sure, happy to. Uh, our management team was lose? sent home. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, everything looks great. Please continue. Okay, perfect. Um, our management team was sent home to work from home mid-March, yes. and we spent about six weeks working extremely hard remotely um, to come up with a very comprehensive plan to safely reopen Roaring Springs, which is the largest water park in the Northwest, and Wahoo's, which is the largest family entertainment center in Idaho. We have about 700,000 guests a year, plus we have our new Galaxy Event Center. So it was a formidable task to figure out how to keep all those guests safe, as well as we have close to 700 employees at the peak of our season. So um, we really committed to virtually every safety measure that we have at our disposable, disposal. Um, we are, um, first of all, going to be, and currently are, actually most of us have returned to work, um, and um, we get our temperatures taken every morning. Um, we will be recording the temp, or not recording, we will be taking the temperatures of every guest um, before they are admitted into the park. And if they have a fever of 100.3 degrees or higher, they will not be allowed into the park. If they choose not to have their temperature taken, they also will not be allowed into the park. And um, we also um, are requiring all of our employees to wear masks with the exception of lifeguards, as that is a safety concern for them to be able to blow their whistles or if they have to jump in the water for a rescue. Um, and we are recommending that our guests wear masks as well. Again, not in the water. We have 
all kinds of social distancing measures in place uh, in our queuing lines, in our dining areas, in our pool layout areas. Um, a water park is different than a public pool in that, um, first of all, just the water park is on 18 acres, while Who's in Roaring Springs is on 30 acres. So we have a lot of space to be able to socially distance guests. Water slides naturally social dis socially distance guests as they are dispatched down uh, the rides. We're limiting the capacities of the wave pool, the Endless River, and Barefoot Bay to 50% of guests, although we are not limiting the overall capacity of Roaring Springs because um, we just have so much space to be able to socially distance people. Um, and again, it's um, it's we're we're able to socially distance individual families from individual families, and um, that's what allows us to open. Um, Roaring Springs or water parks were given authorization specifically to open in stage three. So Roaring Springs will open on May 30th. Um, family entertainment, outdoor type recreate, uh, out attractions were given authorization in the governor's plan in stage two. And so uh, Wahoo's actually opened this past Monday and um, for outdoor attractions only. And we are selling a uh, kind of a reservation based system where you can you have to go online to buy a unlimited four hour play pass that's good for go karts, mini golf, bumper boats, and batting cages for $20. And then we're having two of those outdoor play sessions per day to limit the number of guests. Um, and all the social distancing measures, everything is, is also in place on the Wahoo side. Interestingly, the governor in his Idaho Rebounds plan. Um, designated bowling centers in stage two. So PINs opened Monday as well. And we have a reservation based system also uh, for an hour and a half of bowling for up to six people per lane. And then every other lane is closed to facilitate social distancing. And um, the weather this week hasn't given us a very good feel for how the outdoor, the response to the outdoor attractions uh, will be. Um, but one of our um, sort of um, colleague businesses uh, up in North Idaho called Triple Play um, that is similar to Wahoo's, they did about 47% of business this week uh, in compared to last last year. So that, that was really encouraging. Um, the, uh, the response on to, to our announced openings last weekend largely was extremely positive. Um, people are excited to um, just, you know, that businesses are opening back up. They, I think, are very reassured to see all the safety measures we're taking. Um, the other thing that's unique about aquatic facilities is that chlorine kills COVID per the CDC. And also, uh, Roaring Springs has UV light, ultraviolet light, on every drop of the 1 million gallons of water that circulate through the water park. And UV light kills every virus. And so we have really the cleanest, highest quality water in the Treasure Valley. Um, and so people are excited um, that we're opening up. Um, not everybody's ready to come out yet. And honestly, the biggest objection that we have gotten is from sort of a very small but vocal contingent of people who are upset that we're taking guest temperatures and feel that that's a violation of their privacy and liberty and all of that. And um, we're not recording any temperatures. It's just a quick two second touchless infrared check um, and you know what we're saying to those people is it's certainly your right not to have your temperature taken but it's our right and our responsibility to do absolutely everything we can to protect the guests in our park so we look forward to seeing you when the time is right for your family but this is what we're doing so it's been an um, incredible set of work um, to get to this place and still so much work ahead operationally to make this work um, but we're thrilled and excited to be opening. I mean, we were afraid when all this happened, we might not have a water park season and we have a $1.3 million ride sitting there, Snake River Run, just waiting to be ridden. And um, it would have been not good if those parks couldn't have opened, of course, um, financially um, and for so many people who depend on the parks for jobs. Um, so we're excited. We are being just as proactive as possible. We're one of the first water parks in the whole country to open. And a lot of parks are looking to us uh, as an example and just to see how this is all going to work. Does anybody have any questions?
Thank you, Tiffany. I think we might have a technical issue getting Sean back online. I think okay. what we will do. Oh, Sean is calling me right now. Uh, I think that, hey, Sean, we are live. Okay, you have lost connection. So I, uh, so Tiffany has just wrapped up her presentation to all of us. So I will try to advance your slides. Let's see if I can take that over here. I still see your slides. So um, do we see any questions here? All right, Sean, do you have any questions on your end that we can ask of our panelists? Tiffany, this one is for you. So we have a question. What specific precautions are being taken as they pertain to the bowling facilities? So as I mentioned, we have every other lane closed um, for social distancing. We are restricting the number of bowlers per lane to six and assuming that those are people who are immediate family. Um, we are issuing bowling balls so they're not just all out for everybody to put their fingers in and test out the different weights and, and finger sizes and all of that. Um, we of course are disinfecting shoes um, and every surface in between each scheduled session of bowlers, as I mentioned, limiting capacity um, by accepting online reservations only. And um, we, at, at the park, I mean, we just have a very, very extensive cleaning um, regimens, uh, plexiglass shields, uh, wherever possible for employees to interact um, behind uh, with guests. And um, trying to think if there's anything else specific to bowling. Um, the Galaxy Event Center is, is one that we're still really figuring out and we're waiting for some further guidance from the governor um, as he has um, really advanced more detail about these plans um, as each stage has emerged. Um, he, he just yesterday came out with more details on stage three pertaining to um, you know, recreational facilities, fitness centers. So if, if, um, if you haven't seen those yet, you'll wanna go check them out. Just like um, a, a week or two ago, he came out with a, a similar one sheet for stage two that gave us more guidance and specifically called out water parks and family entertainment centers. Um, the Galaxy um, Event Center, that will, the Galaxy won't open until stage four um, when gatherings of 50 or more people are allowed. Even at that, we're coming up with all uh, kinds of table layouts where there's just three people seated to a round, large round table. Uh, we're serving the buffets. Um, we are really being careful about the kinds of groups that we're bringing in. For example, it's easy enough if you have a, a business luncheon for um, business professionals to um, socially distance and uh, really respect all of our rules. Um, but if it's you know a class of 200 high school graduates, it's not as easy for us to try to enforce social distancing and keep them from hugging and doing all the things they wanna do after they haven't seen each other in a few months. So um, we're being very, very uh, cautious and deliberate as we start our group business back up um, with really no, no group reservations taking place until at least June 13th at the start of stage four. Uh, Tiffany, um, I think I've got back up here uh, as well. Um, you'd mentioned the park having plenty of room for social distancing and stuff. Um, typically what you see at Roaring Springs is a lot of kids in line. Uh, what steps are you taking to try and ensure social distancing between groups uh, for those type of venues and attractions uh, at, at the park? So in all of our queuing lines, we will have, you know, stickers on the ground or the floor separating family groups six feet apart, just like you'd see families standing outside of Home Depot together or Costco waiting to come in separated six feet apart. Once the line reaches the bottom of the tower, a slide tower, no one else will be allowed to get into that line until the line diminishes because we don't want a bunch of long lines intersecting each other out, you know, at the, in, in, in the bottom of the attractions. Um, you know, like we have a lot of um, sort of serpentine rails 
for people to queue in. Um, those will be bypassed um, so that you know you don't have people standing side by side in this you know snaking queue, and we'll just have lines uh, going straight out um, of of socially distanced families, as well as just um, doing our best to constantly be cleaning and disinfecting handrails and and anything like that that would be touched by guests, as well as we're really um we're excited. We just got a new uh, online e-commerce platform and so we're pushing a lot of people to buy tickets online in advance so they can just come straight through the turnstile and not have to um, wait in line to buy tickets and actually our turnstiles are gone so that's one less touch point thank you uh tiffany one other question um is when we did the the program on gyms and fitness centers and things, they'd mentioned they were uh, closing their showers and their lockers and things like that. What is, uh, what are you doing uh, with all the lockers and things that you have available for, for guests? So we're not closing the showers. Um, showering is an important um, other safety measure for other types of waterborne illness. And so we don't want to introduce a different risk than COVID. We would rather have people shower and just work to keep those bathrooms and showers clean um, and then um, as far as lockers we are only renting say every other locker we're limiting um, the number of lockers to try to keep people from being you know really side by side okay excellent um, and you the one poster that we were able to show before we had some technical difficulties mentioned full capacity at 50 percent is that what you're looking at as far as the park altogether, or is that what the, the lifeguards and people are going to allow in specific pools? Yeah, so at Roaring Springs, we are not limiting the overall capacity of the water park because for a few reasons. One, it's such a large park that we are confident in our ability to be able to socially distance families within the park. Second, we're, we're thinking that it's going to get off to a pretty slow start. Um, I think that there's still a lot of people who don't have a comfort level with um, coming out into public places, no matter how many safety measures we take. Um, and then, um, as you mentioned, we are limiting the capacity of those bodies of water, the wave pool, the river, and Barefoot Bay Kids play area to 50%, one, in, one swimmer in, one swimmer out, um, but not limiting the overall capacity. And then on the Wahoo side, the capacity is being limited by these online reservations for the four hour play blocks. Okay, uh, one final question here for this is more related to, I guess, uh, Wahoo. You mentioned the indoor facility is opening in stage three, is that correct? Actually, I failed to mention Wahoo's indoor attractions will open at the beginning of stage three on the same day that Roaring Springs opens on May 30th. And then the Galaxy Event okay. Center will open at the beginning of stage four on June 13th, as long as the governor's stages advance as planned. Okay. Um, as far as your, your games, electronic games, and things like that, do you have any special cleaning protocols that are gonna be in place for those in between guests? Well, we certainly will have employees in vests constantly cleaning that arcade. Um, they've, they've done some spacing of games, I think maybe not sure if they've maybe removed some games from the floor, um, but we have um, the the cleaners that are certified as as proven to kill the COVID virus in in spray bottles, and so we will have a ar small army of employees out um, cleaning all of those surfaces constantly, as well as hand sanitizing stations all throughout the parks, signage encouraging guests to wash their hands thoroughly and all of that. Okay. Um, Marlene, I think I don't have anything else. Do you, do you say anything else um, as far as questions? Nope, we do not have any other questions from our attendees or anything in chat. So you've uh, answered everything. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marlene, if you maybe want to wrap it up, I don't know if everyone can hear me. Uh, since I've kind of lost my connection. 
not on this end. So uh, thank everyone for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Amy with Seltzer Health. Thank you, Dinko with Central District Health. And thank you so much, Tiffany, for joining us today and sharing all of the insights on how you're going to be keeping Meridian safe and healthy and open for business. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.